Hello and welcome to this Factorio tutorial. I'm going to be running through a few things. Uh, I think the uh, there hasn't really been a, a tutorial come out, a good one anyway, for the latest versions of the game. Um, Factorio have a few on their on their website. However, I'm playing in 10.3, uh, so I'm going to run through the early game and how I think. Um, the best way of playing it is. Now I've got my. Um, I'm just going to start a new map. I've got the everything set as normal, except I'm going to turn off biters just to make the um, things a bit easier, and so I don't get sidetracked. I also turn on peaceful mode. Theoretically, though, there will be no biters on this map, uh, setting the size to none. Um, let's get started. Let's generate the map. Now it normally takes a few seconds to generate. Here we go, this is Factorio Free Play. Wonderful. Okay. So, what we're going to need in our early game is three things. Well, four actually. It's the four basic constituents that you'll use throughout the entire game. Uh, they are stone, which you can see here. It's a little uh, brown stuff, a little grey stuff. Um, this you use for a few of the early game structures and a few of the late game structures. Uh, you won't need too much of it, but you will need it. Iron. This is iron. So this is the blue stuff. And on the mini map, it shows up as blue. Okay. This, this um, grey beige, that's stone. Blue is, is steel. In the early game, you need tons of it. Let me just uh, do something. No, I won't do that yet. Yeah, you need tons of it. So having good supplies of iron, so we've got some here, we've got some here, we've got a little bit up here and here, and also over here. So we've got iron. The next thing we're going to need is coal. Now, underneath all these trees is a coal seam. Now normally they're not underneath trees, you know, they can be out in the open. Um, the yellow terrain is normally desert. So, coal will run a lot of your things in the early game, because until you get electricity up, and even when you get electricity up, you'll need to burn something to power the boilers. Uh, we'll get to that shortly, though. The last thing is copper. See, so we've got a uh, supply of copper here, and that seems to be about it for copper. However, until the mid to late game, you don't really need too much of it, so this will probably do us. So we've got our our three basic um, constituents of what we're going to need. Or the four, sorry. We'll need a fifth later on, but that's later on. Um, and that's crude oil, and that shows up as pink. So what I like to do in the early, early game is firstly craft yourself an iron axe. These iron axes will increase your mining power, the speed at which you can pick up structures you put down and also the speed at which you can cut trees now I'll just demonstrate quickly this is a tree you know so I'm, I'm bashing at it with a stick and it's taking quite a while if I add in this iron axe boom gone much much quicker okay so the way I like to play it is I like to throw my burner miner drill Okay, when you start, you start with eight iron plates, enough to make two iron axes, a stone furnace, and a burner miner drill. The way I like to play it is throwing the burner miner drill down on iron, and then putting um, the furnace next to it, because that allows me to automatically smelt iron. And we need iron to build more structures. And there's a fair bit of running around and just placing things and getting things working until you get to the stage where you can automate all of this. Okay, so that's that. Now the next thing I like to do is actually uh, automate, well not really automate, but start mining coal. Otherwise I'm going to have to be chopping trees down forever. And this, this is a pretty ugly map spawn, to be honest. Because it's got so many trees around, I've got to remove them first, which is quite a time-intensive um, process. So let's just 
we'll clear a bit of a path back to our uh, iron. Right. Once we've got this going, we should have enough iron to build something. Now, I just want to fill that up and fill that up. Now, then, I need some stone to create another burner module. And I want to create two of these. So I'm going to need ten stone. Normally stone is one of the last things I throw down. Um, or stone mining is one of the last things I throw down. Because I'm often more preoccupied with getting own iron cracking and getting uh, copper up and running too. Now there's a reason I'm going to build two of these. When you'll notice that this output is down. If you put, whoops, put this like this so that the output arrow faces back into the other one, what will happen is you get in effect whoops you get an effect that they'll feed themselves and just add coal to the next one you see that this is going up even though it's burning it so this one is feeding this one and this one's feeding this one in effect causing uh, an infinite loop and I can come along and click these just control click and pick up the, the coal that they mine and they'll always keep running next what I can do is come back I can throw down this coal into these burner miners I've got some more iron plate now what I might actually do is well after I mo my mine another five stone is I am actually going to change things a little bit with all games of Factorio I change the order in which I do things um, to suit the map and in this map it looks like I'm going to be um, you know, spending a bit of time running around and doing things because everything's not really ideally placed and there's a lot of trees so what I want to do is yeah get this automatically mining and so this way now I can come back and just pick up stone whenever I need it the next thing is going to be uh, getting our copper mining up and running. So I need another five stone. We've got that here, and also need a stone furnace as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run up to our copper deposit. I'm going to place these down. Just like that. Well, actually, what I'll do is I'll load this up with wood and I'll load this up with coal. Now these will smelt away. Wow, lots of trees. Okay. So that's that done. Now what I'll do is I'll create another burner miner drill and another stone furnace to increase our um, iron production. And this you can modify depending on how you, your game looks and what kind of game you're playing. If you're playing a, a hard mode game, you want to keep the pollution down as much as you can. If you look on the minimap, I've turned on um, advanced uh, information, which is the alt key, and you can see that starting to get some, some red pollution spread out across the map and that's because I'm going for a pretty ugly build. I'm using lots of burner miners, I'm you know automating a lot of things and it's all just going along um, quite quickly. Okay, so we've got our our basic industry sorted, we've got our stone being mined, we've got coal being mined over here, we've got our iron plate being created and we've got our copper being created up here. So normally the next thing that I do is I get power up and running. 
power is, is quite important as you um, you can base everything off that moving forward to create power you need copper plate and iron now I've got 27 plate 29 plate now okay that's out and this will um, allow us see minor drills electric minor drills um, boilers and steam engines so I can build all of this now uh, we're going to need an offshore pump a boiler and a steam engine see that I've got enough material to build all of that now what I'm going to do with power production you need to burn something in our boilers so these boilers right you need to put something in them to burn and that will heat up the water that flows through them from the um, offshore pump and then they you put that into the steam engine and the steam engine will create the power ideally you want to place it next to water firstly and secondly coal now this spawn has got some nice coal right next to a you know a good amount of water the only issue is there's lots of trees in the way so what you should really do is spend the time and get rid of the trees now what I'll do is I actually want to go over here somewhere and remove the trees in this area and build down with my power plant looking at the mini map you need to try and plan out your factory and how it's going to move so if I built my power say that way I'd start running into my coal and if it got big enough I'd get into my iron coming this way there's nothing down here and I, I can come this way without you know fouling much up as long as I leave a gap that will allow access over to this area here the next thing to think about will be where I'm going to route these raw materials and create my factory and I think over here will probably be the area I'd like to stay away from water as much as possible because if you start building around water you'll end up with the factory encircling it and then you'll have to run around it to, to place things and, and build things and it, it gets a bit tedious so let's let's do it let's get rid of as many trees as we can here the important thing with factory is to spend the time to get your, your layouts how you want them if you don't you'll you'll find that you'll be forever fixing them and you're forever going to be fixing them anyway so the best thing to do is to try and get them right the first time round if you can okay so this is going to be a really really simple power station we have pump boiler steam engine that's all you need the ideal ratio between them is approximately uh, 12 to 13 boilers no 14 boilers to 12 engines to one pump and that one pump will drive that set up and provide roughly one megawatt of power so if you can get all of that balanced in your head you can come up with a very um, effective way of building your uh, power plants now you'll notice that it's burned a little bit the temperature on the right hand side says 100 and that's what we're looking for the water is 10 so it's fully supplied with water now all we need to do is create some power poles to get the power from our power plant over to where we're going to need it if I was playing this properly I would spend the time and build 14 boilers and uh, 12 steam engines and basically have a fully upgraded um, first stage power plant without wanting to come back and worry about what I'll have to do next now that's probably enough of that I'll queue these up to build and then I'll run it over to where I'm going to need them Ooh. 
going to be very interesting. Seems that so far I'm able to place them in between the trees, which is handy. Okay, so I can plumb off there to get that and uh, get the uh, electric minor drills going there. And I can also grab that from there. So there's plenty of iron plate now running around. And there's also plenty of coal. This will keep running until it has 50 and then it'll stop. So I've picked up the 100 that was there, that was there. And I'll just want to put, whoa, 25 in there. That's going okay for the moment. I only want to put, say, half a dozen in that. So I don't want too much stone. Because I know this is a peaceful map. I'm not worried about building walls or anything, which requires stone. So I can restrict that production to, to whatever's, um, you know, an appropriate amount. This has all got fuel, um, so it's running nicely. I think that that's pretty much the, the early game sorted. From here, what you would do is you would build electric minor drills, replace these burner minor drills with the electric ones, and you would start to steadily automate things. In the next episode, I'll cover the basic automation, and how to go about getting your factory working by itself so you don't have to run around and go okay this is out of fuel let's put some more fuel in oh this is full let's go pick this up and get all this working automatically thank you for joining me and I'll see you then